live in Sydney, and I cross the Anzac Bridge nearly every day. I cross over in one of the estimated 128,000 vehicles. But I've often wondered, how can this bridge carry so many vehicles? And how it works. I want my hot chocolate now. To find out, I began a correspondence with Boulderstone, the company that maintains the Anzac Bridge. They stop it falling down gradually gaining the information I needed. Ryan Davis, who was an engineer on the Anzac Bridge, sent me a lifetime of information. For instance, the height of the two towers on the Anzac Bridge is 120 metres, and the weight of the deck segment is 460 tonnes. But I still didn't understand how the bridge worked. Then I read some books on bridges and thought about what my teacher had taught us about bridges and the three main forces which make or break them. She's mine! But I want to talk to Miss Piggy! When an object is being pulled two ways, it creates a force called tension. What? Why did it fall down? Well, gravity is a force that pulls things down. If we didn't have gravity, we would all be floating up to space. Ah! Oh, and compression. Compression is the opposite of tension. It happens when something is squashed rather than stretched. The cables are subject to tension. The pylon is subject to gravity. The pylon is also subject to compression. Vehicles crossing the Anzac Bridge every day add to the mass of the bridge and therefore to the force of gravity. This creates tension in the cables which bear the load of the bridge deck. However, multiple cables on a cable stage bridge design such as the Anzac ensure that the weight is distributed evenly. The cable tension becomes compression in the pylons, which is then dispersed into the ground. This cable stage design by Percy Allen makes sure that the forces are not focused on any particular point. Now I understand how the Anzac Bridge works. I hope you do too.